Hey guys, today I'm going to be walking through uh, my midgery creation. The elephant meets sea monster. This will just be a very quick overview of the, the tools and methods that I used. Feel free to message me on Discord and join my actual Discord channel as well. Uh, we're going to be hosting a lot of streams, trying to get you guys comfortable in adding motion to your midgery creations and uh, setting you up for success. So for this one, the original image had this Dumbo looking elephant creature sitting in clouds. I knew from there that I wanted to, to create this kind of storm. Um, and that's very important too, is to look at your midgery creation and establish a motion language. Um, so for this, I wanted the clouds moving at a pretty quick pace. I want him timid and you know scared like looking around he had three he has three eyes so for these eyes i want these eyes to animate the same and i want this guy to be as kind of anxiety so i had that one kind of animating a little more random than his top ones uh, and then for the overall movement of the ears just something super dynamic so from the start i started with the character i extracted him from the background and what you do with that is you, you take your, your main image and then you're basically finding a way to extract your, your core subjects. Uh, in this case, it's a pen tool. So it's you know something along these lines, uh, uh, just creating a, just an outline of your character. Um, the more precise, the, the, the better it's gonna look, but in a lot of cases, you don't need to be super, super precise and you can use like a, like a, like a green screen type of extraction. So from there, I, I extracted my character. I knew that I wanted to, to approach this in pieces. I knew that this piece was gonna animate differently than the ears. And then the neck, his smaller ears, and then his larger ears. I wanted each of these pieces to, to animate freely, and I probably could have added another level to this. This was my workflow, um, and what you do is you just keep extracting. Uh, you extract the head, you extract the ears, and then you apply either some sort of like displacement or a puppet map uh, or a puppet tool. So the puppet tool is really, really useful in After Effects. You create kind of pivot points. And from there, you animate each one individually. So for this one, I want a kind of an organic feel. So this is gonna be your anchor. This is gonna be paired with this guy, but this guy's gonna animate a lot, uh, a lot more, it's gonna be a lot more intense than this one. And that's just, you know, it's like hanging a, you know, like a, like a flag. Um, this is on the pole. It's not, this is gonna be dependent on your root object. So in this case, it'd be the head. So you don't want this to move. You want this to move and this to move. You can see it's not, there's not a whole lot of motion, but uh, definitely when you, when you throw everything together, oops, when you throw everything together, you get that kind of beautiful organic feel. After extracting and animating the character, I knew I had to bring in storm clouds. Uh, for this one, I have I have a lot of stock footage. Um, I can, in future lessons, show you how to do this from a still image. Um, but in this case, I wanted to be super fast. Um, this project from midgery creation to animation completion was about two hours. Um, and absolutely, you know, the, you guys starting out that don't don't gauge, you know, your time. You know, have some fun with this. But with the clouds, um, I wanted to get a looping uh, motion. That's another thing too. Is uh, uh, a lot of these animated gifs that I'm posting on Midjourney, uh, I like looping. Uh, it's just a lot cleaner. There's no abrupt end. As you can see, the clouds are in fact looping, and I did that with with. The clouds, I did it with particles, I did it with fog, and I did it with the elephant as well. And uh, the theory of it is to start with the same keyframe or animation and end with the same animation. So I got the storm clouds, 
I wanted to build a kind of landscape to kind of add some depth. Added more of the clouds from the original art, and that's going to be behind the elephant. Added a depth of field, added a, a, uh, a source of light behind her. I added some birds. And here's the elephant. Added some shine, and that's what that's what this guy was doing. So with shine, you can use that, and you can use that. You can build volumetric clouds from it. So I kept adding clouds, clouds, fog, and then particles. And these particles are looping as well. More fog, out of focus for some randomness. I got some leaves. I'll show you the leaves. Um, it it doesn't really make sense that leaves are above the clouds, but <laughs> in this case, you know, I thought they would. I thought it added to it. Uh, I did some grading to help kind of add a little more contrast to it. I added a sharpen because After Effects does a piss poor job at uh, upscaling images. Uh, everything looks blurry, um, so you definitely need to, to put a sharpen on it. And a lot of times I use noise to finish it off as well. Uh, it just it just fills in the the black and I, I, it gives it a more kind of filmic look or film look. And then to finish it off, a vignette. For the final, final step, uh, I like to add a handheld kind of feel. So I use the transform effect. And what I did is I added a, a wiggle expression. And this I will be posting to my Discord. You can use this for any type of animation. Uh, this one, in fact, it loops. Um, so you can throw this on rotation, you can throw this on the intensity of something, and it will loop uh, perfectly. And what this is doing, it's a it's a 200 frame animation. So uh, usually I like to do th uh, 300 frames. It's just a lot cleaner. It's a lot easier to to write expressions. So for this one, I had to guess. So it's it's six seconds and 19 frames. So I did 6.6. 6. Um, I felt like that was the the best numerical value for for looping. And I like to throw. Uh, something behind it that can display the the intensity of the camera shake. And this this one, it's it's not that intense. It's it's a handheld, but it's not super you know overbearing. If I crank this up, you know, for your for your more intense scenes, uh, you know, definitely play around with these. Um, also, side note, I am building a template for beginner users uh, who don't necessarily know the program. Uh, it will come with an assortment of effects and uh, things to, to, to give you a leg up. So after doing that, I like to delete the red because you don't want that in your final image. Just hit render and then post that goodness on Midjourney. Thank you and look forward to future streams.